everyone welcome to Lisa's painting parties it's Thursday night and we'll be painting live in just a few moments um, hope you all are having a fantastic week <clears throat> tonight we're going to be painting our version of this uh, original painting that I did I think I did it last year <clears throat> playing around with like I found a really some colorful bird images I know we had done another colorful bird um, probably last year as well um, so if you enjoy this one there's another one um, another video that we have um, as well so you can look on the videos tab and there's one another one that's like I think has a lot more colors in it to be honest um, this one is really fun to do and I'll walk you through the steps of how we'll go about recreating this <coughs> oh, got a frog in my throat all right um, so we'll start uh, this a little bit after six just to make sure um, anyone who wants to paint along with me live will be able to do so um, and I'll walk through the supplies in just a moment as well. So if you're tuning in, uh, feel free to jump in the comments and just say hi, let me know that you're watching. Um, you can let me know where you're tuning in from as well. I always like to see where everyone is all around the world. Um, it's always quite fun. I'm here in Ajax, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto. Um, and it's like kind of like a weird cloudy, a little rainy day, but warmer. So I'm, I'm enjoying how it's warm. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's been, it's been pretty, pretty good overall. Um, and, um, we'll be getting started in just a moment or two. Um, if you are writing any comments where they could possibly be on my Facebook page, I have no idea. So that, that's interesting. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can find it. I love it. I think I need to do a, a live one day where I'm just playing, just to seeing all of the settings because honestly it's driving me a little mad that I don't know where the comments are okay <laughs> I think I found them <laughs> all right cool all right so in terms of supplies for tonight's paint party um, we'll I always use acrylic paint uh, for all of our paintings um, and I always recommend if you have the three basic primary colors and black and white you can paint to anything that we do. So I'll always speak from that perspective whenever we're mixing colors and paints and whatnot. Uh, the three primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, and black and white. Those are the other ones you need. Um, if you have other colors that are already pre-mixed, sometimes I will dip into the colors that I have just for the heck of it, and I encourage you to do the same. And sometimes also, um, if you want to, we can always change it up as well. So just because this is a blue bird in this color palette, you can change it up and make it a fantastical bird. You can make it a red bird, whatever you want to do. Um, you can change it the background color. I encourage you to make this your own um, and use this as inspiration to have fun and to paint with me. Also, if you're watching and you have any tips or tricks or you want to share anything, feel free to write it in the comments and share with everyone. Um, I like to approach this as like a book club that we're all reading the same book or painting the same picture, but we can all approach it or interpret things our own way. Um, so I'll still explain it from my perspective, but I really encourage you to have fun and to um, share your everything with each other as well. Okay, <clears throat> so the paints that I'm using, I use a, a mix. So I have many of these crafters acrylic that I got from the Dollarama quite cheaply. And um, these ones are, uh, they dry with like a matte finish um, and they're actually quite thick. A lot of them are more thick than my other paint that dries with a um, like a shine kind of a shiny finish this one's called artist's loft um and they're they're a little bit thinner i find um but it does shine when it dries and it looks makes everything look kind of fancy and nice so that's those are the two different brands that i'm using and again it's not because they're like my favorite it's the ones that were available and uh cost effective at the time <laughs> um in terms of other painting supplies for acrylic paint you want to have some water available for you <clears throat> I don't use it heck of a lot um, and I'll and just be sparse with it if you're new to acrylic um, because it can really change the texture of the paint uh, and you don't necessarily want that um, paper towel is my friend I use paper towel more often than the water to like clean off my brushes um, because again I don't like how the water makes the consistency I'm um, just too thin um, so I use paper towel a lot. I only use the water really when I'm done with my brush and I need to like get it soaked so that the paint doesn't stick on the bristles. <clears throat> and I'll also use the water sometimes 
to just get some texture happening or just to spread the paint in a certain way. Um, but that's, that's just the rundown of that. Besides those supplies, I have a palette where I pop my paint on and I also have my canvas. So I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas board. So it's like a very thin cardboard that has canvas that's been stretched on it. Um, it's definitely a different experience than painting on like this one with like a stretched canvas. Stretched canvas, I much prefer. Um, it's more um, just like space issues. They're easier to store when they're smaller like that. Um, and also have brushes. So if you have a variety of brushes, that would be great. Um, for this painting, um, for all paintings really that I do, I suggest having at least three sizes. One that will give you large coverage depending on the canvas size that you're using. This one is a size 12 and it's a flat rounded brush. I have a size two flat brush for like my medium size. And then I have a fine point brush. Um, this one I think was like a size two or four. I can't remember that one now. And it had, I have like a few different ones and it has a kind of like a pencil grip hold on it. So it lets me get some nice detailing as that goes. The other brush I like to use quite a bit too is this one. This one's called a cat's eye or no, a cat's tongue brush. Um, it's kind of shaped like that. This one was a quite expensive, well, more expensive than these, I should say. This brush alone was maybe like 15, I think, or $16. Um, and I, it, it holds the shape and definitely the quality, you can see the difference and it can create a really uh, fine lines as well. Um, so that's kind of a cool one to have if you're looking for something that's versatile. Um, but yeah, if you have the other three, you're good to go. It's not necessary to have that. Um, and then, so we went through all of our supplies. Yes, we did. Perfect, perfect. And then we'll walk through just a rundown of how we're going to approach this painting. Let me just check if anyone has any comments to make sure we're good to go. Oh, amazing. There we go. Oh, now the comments moved up. Okay, that's great. Hey, David, I'm glad you're joining again. I saw your comment about your daughter getting your cat painting and taking it as her own. That's really sweet. I love that. Hi, Renee. Oh, you're in the Barbados. Nice. I saw your comments earlier too. That's fantastic. I'm glad you're here. And Doreen, hello. I love it. Paula, that's a great idea. Paula says she's going to use a, try using a palette knife on this painting. That's a great idea. Palette knives, I'm so mixed on. I have to, I do have to get out of my comfort zone a bit, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe I'll get you all to encourage me to do that. But I do stick with what I know. So I've been using like the same paints, the same brushes pretty much the entire time. And it takes a lot for me to try other techniques. Um, but I am going to be pushing more this year. That's my plan. Um, Doreen, is there anything you've done before and after to the picture? So I would say um, what we're going to start off is we're going to get a nice background happening to the painting. But in terms of like, I do kind of want to leave my water there, even though it's kind of bad to see, but no, I'll move it. Okay. <laughs> um, you don't have to do anything in particular to the canvas to prep it unless the canvas you purchased needs it. Um, I, I usually get things that are ready to go. Um, I think most of them come that way. So I don't think you need to do anything specifically to the canvas to prep it. Uh, but I'll talk you through the first steps. We're going to decide on whatever color you want to use for the background is what you want to decide right now. So if you want to go with green, then I want you to get some green on your palette. If you don't have green, you want to mix blue and yellow together. I would start by mixing equal parts of your blue and yellow and then at changing up the mixture depending on the color that you're getting and what you like. Um, if you have ready pre-mixed green, that's cool too. Um, and I would also suggest getting some white on your canvas as well, because we're, when we do this, we want to keep the center to be lighter, but still have the green. We want that to be like lighter than the sides, right? So you want the sides to have a little bit of darkness in them. You might want to put a drop of black on your palette as well. Black is super powerful. You never need as much as you think you actually need um, when you mix it in with other colors. And when I do my painting mixes in the backgrounds, I actually do all my mixing right on the canvas itself. So if you've seen my previous paint parties, you, you kind of, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, again, I'll walk you through it. I do work quite quickly when I'm started, when I do the back, because I want to make sure my paint stays wet so that it mixes the way I want it to mix. Once it starts to dry, it doesn't have the same um, abilities and the same um, uh, malleability to like make it what I want it to be. Um, so for anyone who is not used to that or who might be like, oh my gosh, you're going fast. Um, or is worried about it, um, I would suggest try to let go um, and try to try to do it as well. Because part of it is like a control thing, I think, um, where you um, 
yeah, you need to kind of like let go and just like trust the process and it'll, it'll work. Acrylic paint can be really great for that. <laughs> and it's a good practice to try and do that, I think. Um, okay, so I'm going to move the painting over to the side and I'll move the camera so you can still see the painting as I'm going through this process. However, you can alternately also go to the post that I put earlier today where it has a picture of this and you can just grab that and you can use that as your reference if you need something more um, available or easier for you to see so you can see some of the details because it won't be as noticeable when we move it over. I'm going to pop that on the set here. Okay, and let me just see if everyone else is good. All right, and you can keep, if you have anything, any comments, any questions, anything, pop them in the comments and I will, every once in a while, jump in and double check to make sure that um, I'm answering them. But if anyone has an answer to someone else's question, feel free to answer them. That's totally fine. <laughs> okay, so let's move this over and down slightly. Okay, the picture's cut off a little bit, but the important part is there, which is our little birdie friend. So we're good to go. Hi, Lynn. Oh, fantastic, yes. And now, absolutely, if anyone's tuning in and you can't participate right now, don't worry. You can always watch this video at any point. It will be available under the videos tab on my Facebook page, and I'll also cross post it to my YouTube channel after. So whatever format you prefer to watch it, it will be available to you. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Just putting my hair up. Okay, so. Um, oh, I haven't even decided if I wanted to keep it the same or want it different. Okay, I need to make that decision right now. Okay, I think I am going to keep it the same because I'm a little tired today and, I, and I, I'm not in the headspace to <laughs> try to change it up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put yellow and blue on my palette and then I might still use some premixed green as well, depending, but I'll start with this and then, oops, grab that. Okay, get some white, and I'll show you my palette in a moment. I'm just going to pop all the colors on. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Yellow and blue, and then a little bit, well, a little bit more white and black. Again, with the Artist Loft, the one that's um, the bigger bottles and the shiny finish, I find I need less paint to do more with it where the dollar store one of the crafters acrylic I tend to use more of that paint um, so it doesn't spread as far so it again depending on the paint you use will determine how much you want to actually put on your um, palette and then yes so let's I'm gonna mix my blue and my yellow to get a green happening and the way I'm gonna start this once I get the green you want to start with so that's the green I got just by mixing those two colors. I'm going to start and just kind of put like X's all over the place on my canvas around the canvas. Just trying to get this kind of messy painterly vibe happening, but covering the canvas at the same time. You also want to get the soft tops and the sides of your painting, just so it feels continuous and it's not just ending weirdly sometimes. I've done that a few times and it bugs me. <laughs> working quickly when you're mixing with the blue and the yellow it's kind of nice because then you can always like dab into more blue or more yellow and you get some nice darkness or lighter lightness a lot more naturally in that color palette which is cool I already like used up all my yellow <laughs> there we go can tell too like I use different paint from that original one. That one was the matte color and this one is the shinier 
one. <clears throat> and for me, I like this kind of messy brushwork because it almost reminds me of like, you know when you take a picture and you can turn on that like focus and the background gets all out of focus, but then this thing in the middle, whatever you're focused on, <laughs> I said focus many times there, um, just comes out and is super sharp. So that's kind of what this reminds me of, which I like. Okay, so I have it, as you saw, I did it pretty fast. I just used paint. I haven't put my, I've used the same paintbrush the whole time and I haven't used the paint, put the paintbrush in the water at all. Okay, so I've just been going around and just doing crisscrosses the whole time. What I'm going to do now is I want to add a little bit of darkness to the corners. So I'm going to get like the littlest bit of black and I'm just going to dab my corners. And now I'm going to continue with this crisscrossy, but just in the corners and everything's wet. So the black almost disappears very fast, which is okay. Cause I'd rather have to just go back and add a little bit more then put too much and then be like, oh no, what am I gonna do now? So yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put a little bit more black right here. I want it a little darker. Have fun with this part because <laughs> everything gets a lot more fine and it's still, it's still quite fun, I have to say, but it's a lot more detailed. This is like the, the free flowing part of tonight's painting. But the nice thing about it is that even though it's more of like, you know, a bird, I have to say, I still like the, like doing all the fur because the fur can be very free. I think last week was last week the one that we did. Yeah. Last week was when we did our, like our train track one. And I enjoy doing that type of perspective, but I'm, I, it, it bothers me so much to have too much structure because I just want to be free with my, <laughs> brush strokes and not worry about perspective or lines or angles <laughs> but it does feel really great when you get that perspective down you know I'm putting a little bit on the sides too that may have been a little bit too much but that's okay we'll make it work won't we okay cool so kind of messy paint lines already looks cloudy, foresty. What I'm going to do is um, I'm now I'm going to get my dirty, dirty paintbrush. And instead of again, putting it in the water, I'm just going to use my paper towel and I'm going to pretty much like squish the paint, main paint out. Right. So now it's like just a little smattering. It's not clean. You definitely don't want to leave your paintbrush like this. But now I'm going to go in and get white and I'm going to start in the middle. And then I'm going to pull into the other. Whenever I have get a bit too much green in the middle, I'm going to go back and clean off my brush again and get more white on it. I still want it to stay very light wherever that bird's going to land. I want it to be like highlighted. Just softening it a little bit in the middle and then I'll just crisscrossy. Oop. A little bit too much green. My white. I don't want you in there. There we go. 
get some more green actually and just I know I said green and <laughs> I clearly put too much blue on my paintbrush. But that's okay. happy with that. I want a little bit more white down here. I don't know how far. So yeah, so just take a look and just decide more or less where you want that, how, how far you want the white to go. I would say aim for it to be a little bit more or bigger than however you want your bird to, however, whatever size you want your bird to be. You want this white shining to be larger. If you end up putting this white and it ends up being very small, then your bird's going to cover it when we paint it on top of it, right? So also having it a little bit lighter on the inside will make the other colors stick and stand out a lot more. Um, so that's another benefit of having a light on the inside, but really it's for that um, effect of just making it stand out and having it pop. So at this point, I'm going to retire my big, huge brush. And now is the first time I'm going to be popping in the water. And when I do that, I am going to be like mixing it quite a bit and I'm pushing it down just to try to get the paint out of the bristles. I don't think I'm going to use this brush anymore. And it's still not considered clean at this point, I would say, but it will be all right for the next little bit. Cool. I'm just going to let it sit in my other container that's clear. Okay, cool. So I'm going to let this dry a bit before we continue. So I'll give you some time for anyone who needs it to continue to just do the background the way they like it. But before we start on the bird, we do need to let that dry. Um, it just makes it easier when we put the bird on. <clears throat> it's not like 100% you know, necessary to do it, but it will definitely make it easier for all the colors to pop on it. And I also, I mean, if you wanted, you could decide and put in your branch here where he's sitting. I am not going to do that because I have found that <laughs> Sometimes if I put in something like that too early, when I paint whatever my focal image is going to be, if for some reason the angle ends up being funky, then either I make the legs and they're like too long or something ends up being weird with it. So I'm going to add the superfluous image, like the other types of things. I'm going to be putting that in after I know where my bird is actually living. So that's how I'm going to approach it. <laughs> but again, you can decide how to do it whichever way works for you. It's super cool to me. Um, another technique that works really cool as a background, instead of doing this like flip floppy, uh, crisscrossy, messy lines, um, you could always do those like, some people have like those like circles that was like faded, um, kind of misty circle look. That looks really cool. And I think that could look really neat in this um, example as well. So that's another option if you want to go that route. Um, just looking at my strokes and seeing if I want to put another coat on the corners. I might, I might do a little bit. I'm not sure. Let's see. Hi, Linda. I'm glad you're joining. Hope you enjoy. All right, so yeah, like some of this I feel like I do want to put a little bit like another layer on, but at the same time, I'm kind of liking how it looks. So you know what? I'm going to leave it. Yes, I'm going to just leave it. <laughs> I tend to want to overtouch it all the time, you know? Okay, so I hope all of you are feeling good. And we'll start doing the bird in a few moments. 
my middle is still pretty wet. But like I said, we can start a bit getting the shape in and whatnot. Hi, Sophia. I'm glad you joined too. We've got some New Yorkers. I love it. <clears throat> okay. So, do, 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 do. So, yeah. So, I think we're going to start placing our bird. And when I do this process, you can pick one of the colors that is a main color that you don't mind if you end up seeing a little bit of. At the same time, we're going to end up, we're going to end up doing our own, we're going to be putting a lot of feathers in is what I'm trying to say. So I think maybe I'm just going to use maybe just yellow, perhaps, just to have the shape of like where the bird's going to let land. And then we'll start playing with all the, the feathering afterwards. So I'm going to get, <clears throat> I think maybe a more fine brush at this point just so I have a bit more control of where I want my bird to be. And you might want to go a bit smaller first and then make him a little bigger. Um, so for this guy, he has a nice, it's like a nice oval shape and it's quite, um, it's pretty much like center space essentially of your canvas. So I'm going to draw with my yellow paint kind of like a guide of like an oval and it's a bit smaller than what I want which is okay because then I can always make it a little bigger Is that okay? Yeah, just like a slight line. That's fine. Okay. And then we have another kind of circle that lives just on the top of the head, or as the head, I should say. So I'm going to just draw like a circle. Just look for your shapes first. And then we build off of that. So from here, it's going to come out for the beak and then down. So we're just going to place it and then we're going to play more. And I'm just going to connect the head with the body with like a little line like that. But again, this is just a guide and then it's kind of looking penguin-ish to me right now. <laughs> but we'll be, we'll be putting more onto it. <clears throat> and then I can decide at this point too. So when you put this lining in just to see like how big you want it, where you want it to live, this is where you can decide, okay, like, is it too small? Do you want to make him a little bigger? And, and th now is the time where we can make those adjustments quite easily. Which I think I will. I feel like he's a little small. So I'm going to bring him... Oh, I got some blue. I wasn't meant to have blue on that. So I'm just going to... Just playing with the shape of him. until I get it to where I want it to be. OK. 
All right, so I think, let me just move it so I can see it for a second. Okay, I think I'm okay with it like that. So, when we're putting this like guideline of where we want our bird to live on our painting, um, we can also start thinking about where other elements are going to be. Um, so we know obviously like our beak will live here, right? We are going to have the eyes going to be, so see where the beak is, where it connects. So the beak's really just at the tip here and then it kind of comes in. I feel like that's where I'm missing a little bit. And the eye lives about there but don't worry about that so much we're going to be putting a lot more stuff in that's just again for my own placement and i think so we have like this part's kind of like a feathery feathery leg that sticks down a bit All right and then we have a tail that comes here more or less like a triangle sticks out but it's kind of cool because it's a nice symmetry to this image like you have this point beak and then this pointy tail like I think it's kind of neat okay cool all right <clears throat> so I'll let you play with that make sure you have your guide as to where your bird's gonna live and then we're going to start playing with the feathers now when we start playing with the feathers um it's going to start by looking i would say pretty bad <laughs> and then as we keep building and at, com continue to layer everything will start to come out more and we'll start to look really nice and we'll have more of a full varied color appearance so when we start, we're going to start with like some of the blues and at the end is when we put in the really defining black lines and even some of the white or some of the more highlighted yellow ones to come out. Um, that's when we do all the detail and we won't do the eye until like pretty much the very end. And when you do the eye, that's when everything just like comes together and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm the most amazing artist because <laughs> that just like brings it to life. But this next step, when we start doing the, the feathers, and all of that like you're you're probably gonna look at it and you're gonna be like what is this and I don't want you to stress out or fret about it just trust the process and we're gonna keep layering and then we'll get it to look um, more feathery and realistic oh yes David I will try <laughs> am I using a small filbert brush um no, this is a, isn't a filbert brush. This is like, um, is it a filbert brush? Actually, yeah, I guess it would be. It was like an, um, here. this is the way it looks when there's water on it. So it's a rounded tip and it becomes very fine point when it is wet and when it is dry. It looks like a big mess like that but then when you wet it it comes nice and thin beautiful fine point and I got them from Amazon it's like a pack of 12 or something pretty good price I don't remember but I remember thinking it was a good deal okay so you can get blue on your palette you can put yellow and blue you still have a little bit of black so we still have some of those from the background I have some of my white still um, if you have another premixed blue or color that you really like, like a, a turquoise -y or something else, or if you're going different palette, if you're not using blue and you're doing a totally different palette color, that's fine. So get the colors you want. Um, and um, we're going to start to put in some of the feathers to get the, the vibe going of this bird. 
So <clears throat> we can really start anywhere. I'm going to start with my my blue. So this is like a, a nice darker blue. And I'm going to start and just anywhere you want. You're going to start to put some lines in. And again, it's going to be tricky because this is very wet still. I'm just going to smear it with my finger a bit just to spread it out a bit. So hopefully it dries a little faster. This is not a, an advanced practice of uh, using your finger paints. <laughs> this is just my, <laughs> my way to see if I can paint without making my blue into a green. So I'm just going to start um, and just start to put in a few strokes start getting the feel of the feathers that live on this bird. So it's like really random. I'm, I'm kind of looking and saying, okay, there's some blue kind of coming this way, like across. And I'm using a thinner brush because we're going to be putting more feathers and whatnot all around. I'm going to come here now. And just put a few on this side. Okay. So if you did the cat one with me a while ago, this is kind of a similar approach where we're going to just put little dollops little dollops no like line line dollops <laughs> line strokes of paint using the colors we want for it to pop strategically so we're like okay we want the shape to kind of flow this way the the, the feathers back here are gonna kind of go down the back here right this tail has a little bit of blue in it too so i'm just gonna Put a little bit in there like that. We have some little feathery things happening here. Where else do we go? And then up here, we've got some. And then we have some coming at the top. Okay, and I'm just putting a little bit in the chest area here. Kind of like more to kind of swing this way as well. I'm just trying to get the movements that I'm seeing from the inspiration image and just plotting it in a little bit. By putting some lines in. Kind of like a weird big bird or something right now because <laughs> he's so yellow it's throwing me off okay and okay so you may want to continue with this color or you may want to add a little bit i'm going to add a little bit of white to my blue just to get a lighter blue and i'm going to go around and kind of do the same thing essentially but looking at where the lighter blue areas are. So there's some a little bit here. In this area. A little bit in here. And some in the tail. A little bit more in this here. I'm just putting a little bit more light blue. So we're just going to layer and put little strokes. So 
little bit lighter around the eye too, it looks like. Okay, and we can go back and forth to this color. So if you want to, like if you're like, okay, I'm kind of digging this. Okay, let's try something else. You can kind of go back and forth through it. I think I'm going to make my blue a little bit darker now by putting a little bit of like a drop of black in it just to get like a darker blue, almost a blacky blue. And I'm gonna go in some of the darker areas and add a little dollops of the color in there. There's some happening in here. <laughs> Some of the feathers are a little short in that area. Not sure why. I did use like a reference picture and then I modified it a bit for this one. I think I might need to change my painting setup soon. I feel like my back is <laughs> not doing well sitting on the floor. I know I've said that probably a few times, but I keep pushing back. I don't want to give up my cross-legged painting seat. Although I think it might be time to change it up. In some way. Okay. Got some cool little lands going on. Hi, Kathy. Yay, I'm glad you're here. It's awesome. Okay. And then I think I'm going to go back and play with my yellow. Oof. Um, I want to like dirty it up a little bit. I'm going to put like a drop of black in my yellow just to like make it a little dirty before I go into like a lighter one and just do the same thing with the yellow. Think about feathers. Okay, where else do we want to put some of this? Maybe like here. And then some of these feathers kind of go like almost like a Christmas tree, like a little bit on either side. And then we have some I think I need a little more of that black in there. The black and the gold, like just putting a little bit, it almost has like a gold, black and the yellow almost has like a goldish type of effect. It's kind of neat.
I'm just making some of them stick out a little bit. I don't want the line around the bird to be like perfect because it doesn't, like all the feathers have to Okay, he looked a little chubbier than my original one, eh? It's kind of cute. Okay, um, I think I'm going to put some white in there. So I'm going to go more, almost a little grayish. Yeah, there we go. Let's do that. So on the top here... I'm just putting in some lines to start getting closer to where that eye is going to be. Of these little gray ones back there. I'm just gonna get some more blue actually and just go back over some of this area. Okay. Just gonna get more blue and more brush. All right. How is it going, everyone? Is it going all right, hopefully? You enjoying it so far? Again, as you saw, it was like, you just kind of put strokes, get one color, pop some strokes in some spots, go back, get a different color. The only thing we need to watch for is just where the darker strokes are and where the lighter strokes are. That's the biggest difference between it, right? Um, I think I want to, I want to get like another bluish color. I think I need some lighter blue happening. Um, and I don't know. No, I think I'm just going to mix more blue and white together. Maybe a little bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to go in so there's a little bit more And okay. It's starting to rain even more. It sounds so nice. I don't think you can hear it though. My window is closed, but. A 
Okay, I think we might just put in the eye just so we can play a little bit more up there. Okay. I don't know if I want to do that yet. I don't think I do yet. I still want to put in some more lines of all of these colors everywhere. Okay. I do have like a like a turquoisey one from Crafters Acrylic. So I'm going to dip in a little bit to that just to add a few little like highlights in certain spots. Turquoise just has a little bit more of a greenish tint to the blue. I'm just going to try to get my brush really fine just to get a little bit of nuance happening. Just putting a little bit some places, but I want I kind of want it lighter than that. I'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter, putting some white into that turquoisey color. Sorry, I'm not talking as much. I'm just putting in some of these strokes. And sometimes when it gets really like fine, I feel like I can't, I have to hold my breath. <laughs> okay, I'm just making it a little bit lighter before we go in and around the eye, make it even darker. I know the beak. It's quite light. I want to start to layer in some of the beak color. So the beak at the bottom here is dark. that part in. Okay. And then we're going to bring this up. So this part here and it's going to come up. It's going to go with the black. Start to And then this is going to come down. Okay, so 
trying to get my blue. So I use the same brush, it still has a bit of the black in it. So I'm just going to go and put some of the glue in. I think I want it to be a little bit lighter color than that, I don't know. I'm just going to get closer to where the eye is. Hi, Jane. Oh, no worries. Jane just said that she would like to join the next one. So just remember, Jane, you can always do this one again. Like, this video will still be up on um, the page. So if you want to paint this particular image, it will still be available for you if you want to in the future. But yes, definitely, I'd love for you to join me live. It's always fun. And for anyone watching, if you haven't yet, there's a post that's pinned to my page, which I'm doing a giveaway this month. So at the end of the month, I'll announce the winner. And the winner will receive um, a free virtual paint party that I'll host uh, for you and up to 10 friends. So you can just comment on that giveaway. Um, there's a couple of other actions there. Like if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Instagram as well. Um, and if you share and tag people in it, then you get more ballots for more of the actions. So just if you see that post, it's very clearly pinned to the top of the page and it says giveaway. Um, definitely, definitely enter and see if that's something that you would like. Cause I would love to have someone who paints along with me win that. On Instagram, I think there's like people who are like professional like contest people. So they like go around and they'll like enter a bunch of contests. So I think there's been a few that have done that to my post. Um, they've, uh, there's been like a lot of comments from like one or two people. And I'm like, oh man, like, so their chances of winning are quite high. But I think it's like, that's what they do. It's cool. Someone was telling me about that. But good for them. I don't have the energy to <laughs> do that, but I know, like, yeah, it can be quite lucrative. If any of you do that, definitely, definitely enter. <laughs> do it to my post. <laughs> At least you can get a chance to win, too. Just putting a few little grayish lines in. I am adding a little bit of water to my gray just because it's um it's kind of thick, but that's the only reason I'm adding. I'm not adding it for like a particular technique on it. It's just because the paint itself is a little thick. I'm just going to put some more in this Okay. I think I need some more blue or something here.
Okay. <laughs> so again, with this, you can kind of keep going back and forth between the colors we've already added and just keep layering, keeping it darker in the certain areas that you want it to be a little darker, keeping it lighter in the other areas that we want it to keep it a little bit lighter, and just keep going until you have it kind of the way you want it. For some of these, I still want like some, I'll put a little bit of white, I think. If it sticks out, I don't know, we shall see. Use the yellow. Yeah, sounds good. Let's get some yellow back in here. A little patchy of yellow here. I need to go back to that eye a little bit. Okay, I think it's looking pretty nice. Oh, Doreen, I'm glad that you're um, enjoying the feathery friend. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Is your hand, uh, is, is your hand getting a little frustrated with it? <laughs> Or is it just that you're just like, okay, there's a lot of little strokes that drive me crazy. Again, I would try to, it's tricky because again, you want to be conscious of like where things are darker and where things are lighter. But beyond that, the at, excuse me, you want to try to let go and just have fun with it. And just like, just move it, move it however we, you, your hand feels free to move. But it's, I know it, but that's, again, I know it's challenging, but try to let go and just have fun. Try and get your brush. I'm just putting a little bit of white on my brush because I want to make it a little bit lighter up in this area. So I'm just going to do that a bit. Almost put on a little bit of highlighted makeup for this guy. Okay, so I think I want to, I think I'm going to put in his eye and then we'll continue doing some more highlighting around it and whatnot. So I'm just going to get black just to get the, the main part. So I always start small and then I build 
out. Into a circle. I think that's where the eye is going to land. Okay. And then I'm going to I'll just start filling in around the eye a bit. Okay, so we have where the eye is. Oh, thanks, Jen. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, now what I'm going to do is before I start putting more detail on the eye, I'm going to bring the finished picture up closer so you can see close up what the eye, what's going on with that eye. Okay, so take a look at that eye. So a few things we need to look at is, so we have the black center, then there is a ring of blue around it, and then there's slight highlights of like a light gray, and it's not a full circle of light gray around, it's just like a touch, like a broken line um, that, um, traces kind of just inside that blue. And then we also have that same gray in the black as a curve and those two white dots. So we're going to be doing those elements on the eye. And then you'll notice there's a stippling here. So just dots of like a light blue. So once we have the feathering in that we like, then we're going to put these little dots and that's going to really make it come um, alive and make it pop. Okay. Hopefully that helped by seeing it super close up like that. Cause that, those details around that eye, I think is really what sets it apart. And then we might want to go in and put in some of those black lines and the feather. I don't know if I will though, cause I do have some really dark lines already. I'm not sure I, I might change them up. Like he looks a bit more like abstracty when you want for me. I might keep them like that. Oh, good. Thanks, Jen. I'm glad that was helpful. Thanks so much, Doreen. I appreciate you being a cheerleader. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, definitely the more interaction that you give a post, um, the more the algorithm ends up like pushing it more. So if you are enjoying it, I, I would really appreciate you putting like, a, you know, heart or send some stuff like that or put a comment or anything like that because that does help get more visibility okay so without further ado okay now I want to say yeah I want to still put a little bit more attention to um, some of the colors before I put in that line so I want to put in a little bit of brightness there I'm going to put some another one here. A little bit like that, I think. Okay. And then I want to get the darker blue. Okay, just put a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to go here too. I didn't really finish that guy up a little bit.
Okay, so I think now I'm ready to go in and go around my eye. Okay, so I just got my blue. And now my painting is dry so I can put my hand on it. Yay! Okay, so I'm just going to go around it. I just put a blue outline around the black. Okay. Yeah, if you need um if you need a break, David, that's totally fine. Definitely. If you guys want to just take like a two minute break, that's totally fine. We can just take a moment and let it sit for a second or two. It's actually going quite quickly, I have to say. I can't believe it's already past seven. And the bird is looking pretty, pretty decent. So yeah, if you want to continue doing some of the, I'll oh, we'll stop on the eye for a moment. I'll give it a second just so to make sure everyone can jump back on. So I'll start it again in a few minutes. I'll let, give that a break. I'm going to just play a little bit more with like the feathering, I think, because I feel like I can't, I mean, you can continue doing so much with the feathering. So I'm just going to go with the black and I'm just going to put in a few little just to I feel like the black gives it a bit more like definition I'm just putting some little black lines up here before we continue on with the eye. Right now it looks really creepy to me. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Diane. Oh, it's okay. You can rewind it too if you want to start a little bit later. Like you could restart it now if you'd like. I think if it makes sense. You can always watch whenever is more convenient for you, of course. Sorry, I, I kind of messed up that line. I'm just going to. Bike him up a little bit because <laughs> that looks kind of weird. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna go back and play with the eye now. 
to get the coloring in. So what we're going to do with the eye is, which is great because now the eye is dry. Well, there's a little bit on the side that's not, but it will work nice in the middle. So I'm going to get my brush to be as pointy, pointy, pointy as possible. Then I'm going to dip it into my white paint. And then I'm going to make a dot. And I'm going to make a smaller dot. Cool. So I just did like a dot in the black and then a smaller dot. Like that. And then now I'm going to get a bit of gray. So I'm going to put a little bit of black in my white so I can get a light gray. So it's going to still stand out on my blue. Okay, and again, I'm going to try to get it nice and thin as possible. Now, there is a slight curve in the black, so I'm just going to do that. And then on the blue, we also have a slight curve there and then there's like another one like that and then another one like that and are kind of like a couple different sections but that's how that looks with the eye there okay and so we can do a little bit of a stippling. I want it to be like a very kind of like a light gray blue. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to make a dab and kind of come out almost like like a triangle and then kind of come back around the eye. I'm just going to dab a bit. Like that. It's like little dab dabs. pretty good about my word guy. I don't know. I might want to do a bit more touch-ups. Um, I think I do want to make it a little bit more white. Just on my kind of highlighting the beak. And under. I'm just gonna put some more white in some spots. Well, it's kind of like a gray white, I suppose, but. So I'm just gonna play around a little bit in there. So, I didn't really touch the tail after I did that first bit, eh? I gotta go back to that guy and play with that. Okay, let's do that right now. Not much happening. It doesn't look too bad, but we definitely want a little bit more in here. I'm putting some of the same colors that we put in elsewhere, but putting a little bit to give it some 
variation. I think I'm good with that. All right, I'm going to place, I'm going to have the legs and they're going to come out a little bit on an angle. So I'm just going to go with black and I'm just going to bring side down. Maybe have little leggy sticking out there. Oh no! Paula! Paula says that the palette knife turns a little bird into mud. Oh shoot! I'm so glad that you tried that though. Like that's so cool that you tried to use palette knife. I love it. The black does. Thanks Jen. Oh, good. Okay. I didn't notice you asked for the eye, Darlene. I'm glad that you were able to still see it after. That's good. Okay. I'm glad it worked out that I showed it when you needed it. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to put where the legs are going to kind of land. And then now I'm going to put in my branch. So I'm just going to move over to one of my other size brushes just so I can quickly put that guy in. So if you don't have brown, you can mix equal parts of blue, yellow, and red, and it will get kind of a, a muddy brown color. Or if you have a pre-mixed brown, you could use that as well. I think I'm gonna try to opt to mix my own, and then I might add some of the pre-mixed one just for the fun of it. Okay. So I'm just gonna use my brush, and I'm just gonna mix these colors together. Thing is depending on the um, primary colors you have they already have kind of a different mix like a yellow sometimes like a sunshine yellow a daffodil yellow like there's so many different kinds so you might have to put once you mix it equally then you might have to be like okay like which way do I need to go with this and then you might have to put some more of like a different color in it whether it's a little bit more of the red and the yellow versus the blue or vice versa. If you're mixing your own brown. Kind of a funky experience. Okay. Mine's looking a little green. But I'll start with this and then we'll go from there. Okay. So this trunk is going to live here. More or less. And I'm just going to start to paint it in. It's not straight, it's kind of got some naughtiness to it. Okay, make sure you paint your sides too. You want to get that in before we put his feet in, obviously. I want to make them a little thicker. So you can always start a little thinner and then you can always make it bigger if you want to. Okay, good. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of black to it, just in a few different spots again to just start creating it different lines and depths in the 
piece of wood here. I'm not putting too much because I still want those feet to pop. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow just to lighten some spots. Okay, that gets a nice texture going. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so I want to get Just gonna put a little bit of detail on the wood. Just gonna put a couple little swooshes to look like it's grainy. I'm just using a little bit of white in my brown, and then I'm gonna. put some reddish the brown again Okay. So I just kept going back and forth with that brown and I put little strokes of black. I put a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red just like to try to not make it so dark in some areas. Okay, I think I'm good with that, but then we're going to have to let it dry a little bit. I know I said that, I'm good, and then I just keep going because I can't help it. I can't help it. Okay. It's hard for me to <laughs> like slow down or like stop it. Oh, it's so hard. Okay. So I am going to wait though until this is dry before I put my little feet on there because if I try to do it now it's it's not going to work properly even though I, I do want to do it right now. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to take a look to see if there's anywhere else any other feathers that I want to add or change. I think I'm pretty happy with him. Let me just look at him. Yeah I feel like he's a little bit more like abstracty or I don't know like painterly like that one has definitely feels featherier like fluffier this one feels definitely like oh it's painted which I'm, I'm good with it's just it's different it's a different vibe you know just gonna see if I want to add a little bit more in here oh it's not the color I really want I don't really know what color I want. What color do I want in here? I think blues. Hmm. Maybe grays. Maybe the gray is what I want.
Yeah, I think that's good. actually time for the feet yet, but I think I might start plotting them in. Yeah, I think maybe I went a little bit too dippy there, right? Maybe that should have been more... It does make it look a little wonkier. Maybe it's going to throw it off. I don't know. to balance that. Put like a line the other way. Yeah, it did look a little weirdly dippy. <laughs> oh, Dave, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I definitely enjoy, <laughs> I definitely prefer landscape <laughs> a lot of times, too. I agree. I know what you mean. Well, I'm glad you still tried, though. That, that's really cool. I'm glad that everyone who, as long as you try to get out of your comfort zone, that's cool. Because I know for me it's tricky. Oh man, it's tricky. Okay, I'm going to put these little claw feet on. So the claw feet are literally like claws. <laughs> so they're going to come. So the one, I don't even know what we want to call it, like toe, oh, claw toe, comes out and then it goes like down, like it's crap, like clasping on. And again, my paint is still wet, so I shouldn't be painting this yet. And then this one's going to go straight and like down. I'm just using black right now and then I'm going to use a little bit of gray to get the claws, the actual like sharp claws painted on. Okay, on this one we're going to go straight-ish and then down. And these also look weird at first, too. But they kind of look weird regardless. I mean, claws are creepy. And now I'm going over the side. So that's kind of his weird, his weird claw toe feet. But I think birds are so creepy. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, they're really cool. I love the colors and they're neat, but they're freaky. I'm not um, a fan. I'm not a fan of birds or squirrels. Squirrels freak me out. Okay, I'm just gonna go in with like a white grain. I'm just gonna just put a little line. Almost like we're painting their toenails. Their creepy claw toenails. <laughs> okay, it looks a little weird, but that's alright. I'm going to go with that, and then I'm just going to fix up the legs a bit, because I just used black so far. I'm just going to make it a little more, a little thicker. Like slightly, just slightly. I think they're a little on the thin side. Gonna somehow like bring them up a little bit to connect it up and then I want to get a little bit of gray um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of like those little dotty dots along the one side because like bird feet are gross and they have those little dots anyways uh, I'm gonna put a little bit on this side just to give it some weird birdie 
heat texture. Rub it a little bit on clove. Maybe not actually, that's not working. No, don't do it on the gloves. Just do it on the, the legs. Ah! Okay, and then I'm just going to get a bit more like blue or something just for like the feathers and I'm just gonna go over a little bit. Maybe that was the wrong one. Just so that it mixes a little bit into here a bit better. Okay. Mm. Still want to put a little bit more here. Okay. I think I'm good. Um, I think there's a little bit more on the eye I want to do. I just want to put like a little bit of those like dobbies around the eye on this side. I think it'll add a little bit more to it. I know I don't have that on that one, but I think this bird is a bit more unique. I'm going to do a few little dotty spotties. On the side like that. Yeah, I think that's good. So I just added a few little dots on the outside of the eye. You can see that. And the bottom, that's why I did the scratchy little chicken feet. Birdie feet. Not chicken feet. It's creepy. Oh no! <laughs> David says mine looks like a squirrel with a bad tail. <laughs> oh no! Squirrels are creepy, man. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, Jen says, I like the difference between the two. It gives them at least a, each of a life of their own. They are little punk rockers. I know, I do feel like they have a little punk vibe, don't they? They're kind of cute. Mine is Fender Chat Size. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, I, I, yeah, that's funny. It's okay. Don't body shame it. It's okay. It's okay the way it is, whether it has a furry squirrel tail or thunder thighs. <laughs> we love it just the same. Okay. I think I'm going to stop touching mine. And I'm going to call this one complete. I think, I think. I'm just looking at it again, just in case there's something else I want to do with it. Definitely has a different vibe. Yeah, they definitely have like a punk rockery. I don't know if I know how to paint birds that don't have like a punky vibe. <laughs> I think that's my bird style. Punk bird. Punk bird style. That could be a thing, right? <laughs> you guys are fun. <laughs> I love it. You guys are so much fun. Okay, I'm going to come back onto the screen for a moment. Thank you all. Let me just fix my camera a bit. There we go. Thank you all for joining me tonight. It's always so much fun to paint with you. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, um, I'd love to see your thunder to thigh bird painting and uh, your squirrel bird. I would love to take a look at them <laughs> and check them out. Um, please share um, if you feel comfortable doing so, obviously, um, with us because I think everyone enjoys um, sharing and seeing what everyone else has painted. Um, I would love to check it out. Um, next week, we have another one. Um, I like totally blanked out what next week is. I know it's a paint from photo. I think it's a landscape. So you'll be happy, David, which is good. Um, and uh, I think so. But now I'm not really sure if it was a landscape or I picked something more close up. I think it was landscape. Anywho. And then the week after, so next week's our 99th paint party, which is crazy. And then the week after is the 100th paint party. And that one, um, I haven't shared yet what we're going to be doing. Um, I have an idea, so um, we'll see how that goes, and I'll surprise you all with that. 
Um, so um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this, um, I hope you have. Let other people know if you have anyone else who likes to paint and like to join in on our uh, weekly fun. Um, and I will see you all next week. Have a great night and um, keep on being creative, guys. All right, bye.